And for me, it was really eye-opening moving here because I myself also was a little bit skeptical. I mm, come from a mm-hmm. classically trained background in wine. And so thinking, how can they grow these grapes and make these blends and have them be so enjoyable and people can really savor them? And as I started to learn more, it was really like Pandora's box. Right. I understood so much more about the environment, the social impact of wine, the economic impact of wine. And like Wesley, you pointed out, there's over 140 wineries in Arizona. There's over a million bottles produced in Arizona. And the growth has been exponential since uh, really the foundation of the industry, which really spearheaded in the 1970s. So it's been an exciting time to be in Arizona. Yes, absolutely. And, and I've, tried, I've tried to try a lot of the wines uh, in Southern Arizona. I actually live about 40 minutes from Sonoida. Um, Great. And so I, I get to, that's in my backyard uh, and I get to go out there. Uh, Sedona, on the other hand, I don't know a lot about their wines up there, but I don't know how many uh, of the wineries that um, can, can produce wine like we can in Southern Arizona. Sure. So there's three American viticultural areas in Arizona. Mm -hmm. Uh, The first one being Sonoida. It was established in 1984. The next one was Wilcox. That's where most of the wine is, or most of the grapes are grown. About 70% of the production was started in 2016. And the Verde Valley is the newest AVA. It was established in 2021. And that was really spearheaded by the Verde Valley Wine Association to um, advocate that their wines are different than Southern Arizona. And they are indeed. Um, Elevation plays a major role in all of these wine regions. And the wines have been beautiful. I actually brought one with me today. 